In this video, the Airstream gets a bath, and we're going to give you an overview of our solar setup on our Airstream. So stay tuned right after we roll this introduction footage. So today I thought I'd give the Airstream a bath. It's been a while since it's been washed and we've been on the road, we haven't been on the road since March and we brought it back and really didn't wash it before we put it away. So it's a nice day today, it's not too warm. No, sunny, probably would have preferred a little cloud so it wouldn't dry as quick, but. So now you're probably wondering some of the equipment I have. I have a power washer. It's a small one, I bought it at Home Depot, not very big, but it does a decent job. And the real reason I got a power washer is because I wanted to be able to use this guy right here, and this is a foam cannon. And you attach it to the power washer, you fill this with a combination of soap and water, probably about four ounces of soap to the, you know, a quart of water. And when you spray it, it just foams onto, the, onto whatever you're washing. And it makes it much easier to clean. One thing you're not doing so much is you're not taking a wash mitt or whatever full of soapy water and then trying to rub it against a um, dry or damp um, vehicle where you could be just dragging the dirt around. This actually starts to lift some of the dirt off before you start washing. So it really works to help prevent scratches in your when you're washing whatever you're, you're doing, whether it's your car, or your Airstream or whatever. So this is a lot of what professionals use to clean things and I um, really like it on the Airstream because it makes the job go much faster. So we're going to get back to it. We're going to get this side washed. You'll see how quick it goes. So just like that, I've got the side of the Airstream washed. One thing that you'd notice, I did not use the end that comes with the power washer. Don't want to use this when you're uh, washing your car or Airstream. It will force water into the seams and ruin the seals. So you want to use an end like this. This is a 40 degree spray tip. So it fans out quite a bit, it reduces the pressure considerably. and it does a quick job of rinsing and allows you to get to the next area very quickly. I'm going to finish this uh, wash and then we'll get together again and we'll talk about solar. There we go, all washed. Today's video, we're gonna discuss our solar setup in our Airstream. We did the install ourselves shortly after buying the Airstream. We've uh, been pretty happy with it. I wanna go over exactly what we've done for solar on our Airstream and what we plan to do in the future because we've got some ideas on where we wanna go with this. So we're going to start our overview of our solar setup here on the roof where we have three 90 watt ZAMP solar panels. These solar panels mounted in through a port that is was factory installed on the roof that had three plugs and pre-wired into the Airstream, which made the setup quite easy. These are narrow um, solar panels made by ZAMP that are designed for Airstreams. In fact, they're the exact same ones that Airstream would install on a trailer if you were to order solar as an option. Now we 
weren't happy with just having these three, though these three work great and do a good job of keeping the battery and everything maintained. But we decided that we wanted to have the flexibility of having a little bit more, so I'll show you that next. So, in addition to the three panels on the roof, we have another 160 watts of solar in a portable suitcase panel. This can be added into the system at any time. It plugs directly into the front of the trailer, and that plug goes directly to the charge controller. So this, all these solar panels will work together as one setup when they're all plugged in and working. Now the nice advantage to this is it allows us to move this panel as the sun moves during the day, allowing us to get a little more solar during the early of the day and a little more solar at the end of the day compared to the fixed rooftop panels. And right below here is a plug that you can be used to plug in the um, portable 160 watt panels. While we're right here, we'll show you the batteries. The batteries were upgraded over what AirSteam gives you to two AGM six volt golf cart batteries. These have additional storage capacity over the stock setup. Stock setup is a group 24 battery with 80 amp hours each, total of 160 amp hours. These batteries each have 105 amp hours, so a total of 210 amp hours of storage capacity. Now because these are lead acid batteries, they are only capable of using half of that. So you've got 105 amp hours of capacity that you can use. All right, so we've now moved inside and this is the front lounge area and I've removed some of the cushions and the base and I wanna show you where we located our charge controller. Right here on this wall is the charge controller. It is wired in through two 40 amp hour circuit breakers. The purpose of these is to allow me to shut off the solar at any time. I can simply hit these buttons here and the solar system is completely shut down. Even though the panels are still producing power, nothing's coming into the charge controller and into the battery. So it allows me to isolate the system out. Now we put the system back online. Now you're probably wondering, geez, you've got this thing mounted underneath the front lounge. How do you see it? Well, I'll show you. Okay, so behind me is my remote panel. And this allows me to monitor the system, show me the condition of my batteries, Right now I've got 13.8 volts, and it also allows me to monitor how much solar I'm bringing in. So this, say so right now it's telling me my batteries are fully charged, and I can cycle through and it'll tell me how many amps of solar I'm picking up off the roof. So this is a good setup, very pleased with it. It was reasonably costly, cost effectively to do this. I did the install myself, um, the biggest, <laughs> Part about this was just getting comfortable drilling holes in your roof. Well, if you get past that and you use Dicor and everything to seal the holes up, you know, the screw holes up, you're gonna, not gonna be fine with it. So the other aspect, other piece of our system is the inverter right here. And this is the factory installed inverter from Airstream. It's a thousand watts. It has a remote panel right there to turn it on and off and it's wired in to a limited number of outlets in the trailer. As you can see on the side of the TV, there's two sets of outlets. The lower ones are the inverter. And that's the same in any position where you want to use the inverter. So if we look up here in this cabinet, there again are two sets of outlets. One of them is marked for the inverter. And there's two other locations like that. Would I do this system again? Yes. 
I think the amount of solar I have on the roof is fine. I do have room for one more solar panel up there if I wanted to add that in at some point. I don't believe I need it. The 160 watt additional solar that I can plug in at any time seems to work pretty well. When I have a sunny day, I'm fully recharged by noon the next day when we're boondocking. So that gives me plenty of reserve. That brings me to the next part. What would I do different? Well, I think my biggest opportunity here that what I want to change would be to add additional battery capacity and increase the inverter to a larger size. And the reason I want to do that is I'd rather, I'd like to have the capability to run any outlet in the Airstream on the inverter. I'd like to have the capability to be able to run the microwave on the inverter and the refrigerator on the inverter. And why would you say, why would I want to run the refrigerator? I can run that off of propane. I, I think it's actually a better idea if I can run the refrigerator off of electric while we're towing, because then I don't have a fire going in the back of the refrigerator, a pilot light, which would be good for when we stop and get fuel and such. I don't have to worry about that. I also think the refrigerator runs more efficiently on electric than it does on propane. So those are you know some of the reasons why I think I'd like to upgrade this. So we are going to make those upgrades and that's going to be the next video uh, in this series. And we're going to put a full um, pass-through inverter that will allow us to run everything in this trailer off the inverter. The microwave will work and the refrigerator will work off of this new inverter. It will also be a hybrid inverter that will allow the Airstream or allow the inverter to kick in when we don't have a full 30 amps of electricity. But if we're camping someplace and if they only have 20 amp outlet, we will be able to have the inverter make up the additional 10 amps amps of power so that we can run everything. So it will pull off the batteries, the solar will recharge the batteries, and the whole system will work pretty well from there. So that's the plan. We have new batteries on order. We have a new inverter on order. We have a battery monitor on order. And in the next video, we're gonna go through installing all of that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss that next video when we do go over the, the next level of our solar system. For now, everybody out there, please stay safe and we will see you all down the road. Bye.